Greetings, and I hope you're doing well this uh, moment that we are having this devotion. I just wanted to bring my reflection and thoughts on Psalm 27 to encourage us these days that, you know, almost everyone and everywhere is um, kind of scared and concerned about what is happening. So we're going to have this devotion and I encourage you to just sit and listen. You can go through the scripture as, uh, as I try to think about it and invite you to think along with me. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this moment. We give you praise and honor. I thank you, O oh God, for whoever is going to see this. Pray that you encourage us even in this time. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified even to move us on. That despite our concerns, our fears, our uncertainties, that we have our faith anchored in you. Because we pray everything knowing fully, you're going to give us more understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to read a few verses from um, Psalm 27 and um, just kind of try to reflect on this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then, I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his uh, sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Well, you know, I've just read Psalm 27, verse 1, verse 3, 4, and 5. This, this psalm was written by David. And Old Testament scholars believe that um, he wrote this psalm when he was actually facing very serious problems. And they tried to place it when he was running away uh, from Saul. And he was, uh, those of you that know the background to that, you know that he, he was actually running, hiding in caves. And uh, it was a very, very difficult time for David. The situation was not easy for no offense that he committed for nothing he did that warranted him to face that situation but here he was he had to be running for his life and it was a scary situation now david i want us to look at this in three parts number one his confidence in god his confidence actually was in god that no matter what happened, whatever was going on, he knew one thing for sure. And that was that the Lord was his light and his salvation. And he made a declaration. It is one thing to believe on something and it's another thing to declare it. So he believed that the fact that even though he was going through darkness, gloomy situation, fearful situation, his life was at risk. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He knew there was nothing he could do to save himself. He was not going to go around fighting soul. He was not going to fight the national army, even though... I mean, if he wanted to do that, he could try, but he knew that was going to be uh, something that God did not want him to do. So he said, the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Now, the concept of light. You know, if you are in a very difficult situation, sometimes your sight becomes limited. And when I talk about your sight, it may not just mean your physical sight. It may be your inner sight, your, your thought pattern, your, your ability to decipher the situation may be difficult, may be limited. So David, at that time, whatever was going on, even though he could not explain it, he believed that the Lord was his light. Can we actually say the same thing? I don't know for you, but there are times that I get to, I get to a situation and I feel, what do I need to do now? And I don't have any answers. It's too difficult for me to understand. But here was David. He was saying, the Lord is my light. It is very significant that in every situation you find yourself, you let the light of the Lord shine upon that situation. You let the light of the Lord shine in your heart because if he does, he is going to actually open up the situation for you to understand. Okay? The, the example he went on to also give there, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. David did not trust in his expertise or anything of his to save him. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. From whence, from where do, will his help come from? His help will only come from the Lord. His salvation will only come from the Lord. And because he had that confidence in the Lord, he could declare that, whom shall I fear? So that is it. There was nothing that was enough to shake him and make him fear. So if I would want to bring this situation home, you know, some of us are so uncertain of things that are going to happen. What are we going to, what news are we going to receive tomorrow? What, what is going to happen, you know, with what is happening around us now? What is happening around the world is something that could cause you to fear. But if we go back in the quietness of our shelters, our rooms, our places where we are, and declare with confidence that the Lord is our light and our salvation, then it will make a difference. We would see that we actually will have confidence and not fear. Because David went on to say here, the Lord is my stronghold. I mean, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And you know, a stronghold is a place where you run for refuge. It's a place where you hide. It's a place where you take refuge. So God is his stronghold. Can we say that with confidence in these difficult times? That the Lord is the stronghold of our lives. This was personal. This is personal confidence in God. It is not because of church, because of somebody else, somebody's faith. But it is because of the confidence that David had personally on God. He could say, he can fear nothing. And because of that, God is his light. God is his salvation. And God is his stronghold. Because of this, in verse 3, he said, Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. So it is not on how much money he had. It was not on how much strength he had, how much security he had, how much smart or knowledge he had, but because he knew the Lord was his light, is his salvation, and the Lord is his, is his stronghold. Even an army, an entire army, when they beseech him, he said, my heart will not fear because his confidence was in the Lord. 
And then he said, though war breaks out against me, even then will I be confident. I want to invite you to just think of it on a personal level. Where is your confidence? Is your confidence is it, is your confidence in the economy? Is your confidence on human government? Is your confidence on your church, your pastor, your leaders? David did not place confidence on any of this. Sometimes we have confidence and feel we are secured because of, you know, the place we live, what we have, what we do, the security we have around us. All of that is nothing. All of that will crumble as we have seen. The Lord God has allowed something to happen to teach us a lesson. The coronavirus came. Some people were in denial of it. Some people, you know, were paranoid. Some people were running helter-skelter. But if you compose yourself and just look at it, there is, there, there is nothing around us that is not able to be touched by the impact of what is going on. The economy is touched. You know, we think of very good healthcare system that is also touched because they don't have answers to coronavirus yet. And people are researching and are working so hard to find a cure or solution. I'm not sure they have it yet. But you know what? If we could pray, if we could go back to God, if we could actually ask God, to be the light of those researchers in the darkness that they are coming through. If we could actually look at the situation and believe that God is our salvation in this situation and hold him onto that, he is going to lead us through it because this is more like an army besieging us, the army of COVID-19, you know. But David said, Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Let our confidence be in God. Because he's made it clear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. Confident in what or in whom? Confident in God. But this is the point. That's not just, it's not just a thing that you have in one day. So, number one, we have confidence in God. And number two, we take away that confidence from all the securities we have from us. Because even though securities can fail, but we depend on God and God is going to see us through. But David was not just saying this, and this is a once and for all thing. In verse 4 and 5, verse 4 particularly, he made it clear. His desire at a time like that was... He said, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. One thing, not many things. <laughs> you know, he did not say, I want to look younger for the rest of my life. Or he did not say, I want to be richer. He did not even say, I want you to kill my enemies. Or I want you to take this problem away. But he said, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only. Only do I seek. He was not just asking, but he was actively seeking. He was seeking. He was going after it. And he was asking God for it. And you know what that is? The verse says here, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. You may wonder what kind of request is this that David was asking. One thing, one single thing, one thing. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Now, I don't want you to have the idea that David was seeking to, 
to abandon all his responsibilities and just move into the temple and make his dwelling there. In fact, at that point, if he made any appearance trying to go to the temple, that was when actually he would be caught. So, but what was he talking about here? He actually wanted to practice the presence of God. He wanted to be in the presence of the God. He said, he said that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, that I may dwell in the shelter of the Lord, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. So it was not at some times, you know, sometimes we, I mean, people have a funny way of, you know, committing to God, you know, sometime we think it is on Sunday, we come to the church and then within the week, we can just go to some places that we don't want anyone to see or anyone to know. Or we do some things in our homes that God, we don't want anyone to know. And that's why sometime, um, you know, as a pastor, or, you know, you do, you do visitation, sometimes people will like you to call them, right? Because they don't want you to find them in a bad spot or doing something that you, I mean, they don't want you to know. Well, whatever it is that we are doing, wherever we find ourselves at home, at work and everywhere. What David was giving us the example here, he said he wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. And I would want to apply that to being in the presence of God. That consciousness that everything we do at any time is actually being seen by God. God is there. It's one thing for us to invite him into it. And it's another thing to do it and he be sad. So David was saying he's, he's, he was seeking to dwell in the house of the Lord and to gaze on the beauty of of the Lord and to seek him in the temple okay that's that's a lot there he wanted to gaze on the beauty of the Lord he wants to abide in that presence that beautiful presence of God and to seek him in the temple well of course there are some of us today we we are unavoidably away from the church. Just like most of us know, most of our churches, we don't meet anymore because of, you know, shelter in place. We just have to stay home. We want to stop the spread of this virus. But let me tell you something. The temple today is not in Jerusalem. The temple is not in the church building. We are the temple of God. And God dwells in us. So, don't be afraid. Let's not fear. Let's stay with God. And seek Him. And dwell in His presence. And you know what David was making? I mean, in the next verse, I really like the way he put it. In verse 5, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. This is the security we need. This is the protection we need. It's not in our wealth. It is not in the beauty of our homes. It's not in the health we have or anything. The security that we need that is found in God comes as a result of us practicing the presence of God that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because God is with us. He will protect us in the day of trouble like today. Our hearts, first of all, need to be protected from the fear of that is just, you know, breaking so many homes and lives and so many um, things that we do. It's a difficult time. People have had to cancel weddings. People have had to cancel funerals. 
People have had to cancel graduation. I mean, people have schooled for so many years, they want to graduate. I mean, there are so many things that what is happening is causing us, but let our hearts not be there. Even as difficult as it is, let us have confidence in God and seek to practice his presence because in days like this, God will keep us and he will comfort us. May the Lord bless us together. And I want to pray for, for us that are watching this, that God will keep us. Gracious Lord, we are so thankful to you because there is nothing that is beyond us that you ever allow to come and take us. This issue of coronavirus, this that is ravaging our homes, our lives, everything seems to have changed. But I pray that you will let us arise in confidence and have confidence in you. That you would teach us to seek your presence and to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and keep you.